Hey, New Hope family, I hope all is well in your world today. The sun is shining. It's the first part of May. Spring is here. And the trees, the plants, the grass, the flowers are all coming back to life. It's really my favorite season of the year. You might see behind me some activity happening as they're uh, doing groundwork and the construction of the new building. Uh, you might even hear some of that noise in the background. Uh, but as we get started here, I just want to remind you, as we often do, that if you have a need in your life, you're going through a difficult time, you just need prayer, whatever it might be, reach out and contact us. If you don't have one of the pastor's phone numbers, you can call our church office. It's 515-254-9094. They will get you that information or just email us. My email is jeff at newhope.church. Um, and if you want to connect with one of the other pastors, they would love to hear from you as well. They're, all of our emails are first name at newhope.church. We would love to hear from you. You know, something that's been on my mind a lot lately that I've been contemplating over the past several months is this realization that we are nearing the end of the end times. When you consider all the circumstances that the Bible describes uh, that will be happening in the end of times, Israel is a nation, uh, the decay of truth and morality, the increase of knowledge and technology, it is really hard not to come to this conclusion. My Wednesday evening class just finished a study on what the Bible has to say about the signs of the, of the times that will signify that we're at the end of days. And so um, just thinking about Bible prophecy, Bible prophecy is all about future events, but I believe that the purpose of prophecy is to impact the way that we think and the way that we live in this world. Bible prophecy helps us in several ways. The first is that it reminds us that God is in control of the universe. It might appear that Satan or evil men have taken over, but I want to remind you that no demon, no man, no devil can hinder the purposes of a sovereign God. The second thing that Bible prophecy does is it reminds us that God is good. You see, if this life and this world with all of its pain and evil and suffering, if that's all there is, then we might challenge the idea that God is good and loving. But Bible prophecy reveals that the end of the story is good, even glorious for God's people, his children. Paul says in Romans 8, 18, he says, I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. The third thing Bible prophecy does is that it assists us in living holy lives. If you have a clear understanding of the coming judgments and of Jesus's return, then you're more likely to live well for Christ and avoid being trapped by the sins of this world. Bible prophecy helps us to live pure lives. First John chapter two, verse 28 through three, three says, and now dear children continue in him so that when he appears, we may be confident and unashamed to be for him at his appearing. If you know that he is righteous, you know that everyone who does what is right has been born of him. See what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called the children of God. And, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Dear friends, now we are children of God, and what we will be has not yet been made known. But we know that when Christ appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. All who have this hope in him purify themselves just as he is pure. The fourth thing Bible prophecy does, it also it, it helps us to establish proper priorities. Those who live with an awareness of Christ's return, the reality of personal judgment and the coming kingdom of God think differently regarding the use of their time, their money, and their resources. Second Peter chapter 3, verse 10 to 14, But the day of the Lord will come like a thief. The heavens will disappear with a roar. The elements will be destroyed by fire and the earth and everything done in it will be laid bare. Since everything will be destroyed in this way, what kind of people ought you to be? You ought to live holy and godly lives as you look forward to the day of God and speed its coming. That day will bring about the destruction of the heavens by fire and the elements will melt in the heat. But in keeping with his promise, we are looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth where righteousness dwells. So then, dear friends, since you are looking forward to this, make every effort to be found spotless, blameless, and at peace with him. The final thing is Bible prophecy gives us hope. None of us are exempt from painful, difficult, even depressing situations. But as Christians, we look beyond these problems and we can be confident of our eternal future. Titus 2, 11 to 13 says, For the grace of God has appeared that offers salvation to all people. 
It teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in this present age while we wait for the blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. So what should we do if we truly believe that we're in the end of days? One, God has given us his Holy Spirit, and we need to lean on and trust in the Holy Spirit and his work in our life to guide us in all of these truths that we just read from Scripture. Jesus tells a parable in Matthew 25 about 10 bridesmaids, and this is what he says. He says, The kingdom of heaven will be like 10 bridesmaids who took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. The five who were foolish didn't take enough oil for their lamps, but the other five were wise enough to take along extra oil. And when the bridegroom was delayed, they all became browse, drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight, they were roused by the shout, look for the bridegroom is coming, come out and meet him. And all the bridesmaids got up and prepared their lamps. The five foolish ones asked the others, please give us some of your oil because our lamps are going out. But the others replied, we don't have enough for all of us. Go to a shop and buy some for yourselves. But while they were gone to buy oil, the bridegroom came. And then those who were ready went in with him to the marriage feast and the door was locked. Later, when the other five bridesmaids returned, they stood outside calling, Lord, Lord, open the door for us. But he called back, believe me, I don't know you. So you too must keep watch for you do not know the day or the hour of my return. Listen, in these times that we live in, we need to keep watch. We need to be watching. We need to be ready. We need to be waiting for Jesus's return. His return is coming very soon. So here's what we need to do. We need to get right with Jesus. We need to stay right with Jesus. We need to be watching. We need to be ready because we know that he can come back at any moment. So be encouraged by these words and encourage others with these words. As we see the day approaching of Christ's return, let us look up for uh, our redemption is drawing near. Let me pray for you. Father, I pray that in these days that we live in, that we wouldn't be discouraged, but we would be encouraged because the signs tell us that your return is very near. May we encourage one another all the more as we see that day approaching, and may we take as many people to heaven with us as possible. So give us power by your Holy Spirit and give us uh, the, 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 the strength and the boldness to take the good news wherever we go. And let's take as many people to heaven as possible as we possibly can. So God, I pray for your people. Thank you for our church. I pray you bless your people today and all that we do. But may we always be looking to you and uh, watching and ready for your return. Thank you, Jesus, for your faithfulness to us. And it's in your name that we pray. Amen. God bless you.